Does God choose your spouse? In this video, I would like to dive into that question because many individuals are stuck wondering where is that man or woman that God has created them for. And we need to understand this. Does God create that individual for us or we have the option to choose or is it somewhere borderline that thought? Now, in this single series, I like to destroy some lies that the enemy has been telling us. Because unless you are able to identify the lies that exist, you are going to act in accordance to what the enemy has planted in your mind. And when you act in accordance with what the enemy wants, you know that you're going to miss out on the promises and the blessings of the Lord. And as Christians, we want to obtain the promises of God, especially concerning marriage, you know. Bless the Lord. Now, let's dive into this. Does God choose your spouse? Now, I have, I have some personal opinions on this. However, my opinion doesn't matter. It's what the word of God says is the important thing. Now, searching the scriptures, I cannot find anywhere where God chose the spouse of anyone. Yes, I, I know what you're thinking. Mm. You're, you're probably thinking about Hosea, right? So God told Hosea to go and marry a prostitute or something like that. Who go? Yeah, that's that's not in your Bible. Okay, you, you, you don't believe. All right. All right, no problem. Fair enough. Let's look at the word of God. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, right? Verse 2, it says, In the beginning, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go. Take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land have committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. Uh, I, there's nothing here that says God said to go and marry Gomer or go and marry a prostitute. You see, here's the thing. The children of Israel had committed great sin in in idolatry and those things so god was calling the nation as a whole whores right and god was saying this go and take one of them that's what god was really saying he was calling them as a whole as a nation whores because they are departed from the lord and were serving idols so verse Three says, and so he went. Listen, listen. So he went. Hosea went, and took Gomer, the daughter of the blame, which conceived and bare my son. So it was Hosea who chose Gomer. Yes, she saw him to cheat on him, but it's his choice. I don't know if he had if he had chosen someone else, if they would not would have cheated, or wouldn't have cheated. I can say that's just pure speculation. However, God never told him who to choose. He chose. Right? And here's the thing. Many times as individuals, we say that, you know, even as Christians, that God has that individual for, for me, that individual for me, that my soul mates. I'm pretty sure you have heard the term. Now, I I come across that. I remember I was speaking to the Lord once. I don't remember what the question I was asking the Lord pertaining to the one, you know. Many times we don't say, we may not say so me, but we may say the one that God, you know, that God has so me. And I remember I was I felt very led to search do a research on soulmate and when I did my research I found out that soulmate 
is actually a Greek Egyptian. So it was orig originated in Greek and then came to in the Egyptian or the other way around. Sorry, Egyptian Greek. So it was originated in Greek, then came to sorry. It was originated in Egypt and then came to Greek mythology. That's what it is. It's a myth. What the teaching was is that man was origina originally created as one body which had four hands, four feet, and one soul. And apparently man upset it, got the gods upset. And because of that, he was struck down and split in two. So man started, well, had two hands, two feet, body was split in two, and the soul was split in two. And he, he has been cursed to spend his entire life to search for his other half. That is what soulmate mean. The, when I read, when I read it, I was immediately I started to speak to me and said, "You have it's not two, it's not two halves coming together to be one. It is one whole and another whole coming together two to make one." You don't have half of a soul. You have one whole soul. Every individual has a whole soul. And you're coming together to be one. We know that God did not create man with four hands and four feet. So this teaching is wrong. Now, it has subtly, I don't know where, I don't know when, I don't know how, but it came into the church. Now, you may be saying, well, I don't believe that thing about soulmate. Well, you may not believe the entirety of it. But the fact that you will say who is the one, suggesting that there is only one. And that is where the problem lies. Because I remember the Lord was like pretty much downloading my spirit and was saying, look at it. If I only create one individual for one particular individual, so say God created person A for person B, and we know of individuals who went and married someone who, who we could have said no, that was just not of God, right? Maybe even a Christian who went and got married to someone who is not a believer, the scripture says, be not unequally yoke, right, with unbelievers. So you know that, that that could not be of God, right? Now, consider this. If person A was supposed to get married to person B, but person A chose to get married to person C, does that mean that person B is doomed to remain single for the rest of his life? Because who he was supposed to get married to chose to marry someone else. It can't be. It just can't be. Right? And that is where we are having problems. Because if you are looking for that one particular individual that God has said, you just believe that this individual answers all your problems. Or, you know, because this is the one God has said, you, this is the only one that can work. Then you are doomed to keep on searching and never finding the individual. But if you understand that you have, op you have options, then rather than searching for the one, you starting to look for individuals who you are compatible with. Because really and truly, in the strictest sense of what a, a Christian is, two Christians, a male and a female, can come together and work. Any two Christians, really. If they are, once they are following the word of God, yes, any two Christians can come together and work. However, we have, you know, we don't work well with everyone. Even though you may be my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, we don't all work together best. We have our preference, you know. We have our different personalities. So while in, you know, 
me as Christians should be able to work together. The reality is we don't always. So we have to choose someone who we are compatible with. Now, there is a verse of scripture and in Corinthians again, Paul was speaking and he was saying that to the unmarried, he said that if a woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive, but if he is dead, she is free to marry whomsoever she chooses only in the Lord. Now, what that is saying, when I look at that scripture, is saying that, listen, you can choose whoever you want to get married to. The woman can choose whoever she wants to get married to. You know, or, however, it has to be in the Lord. That is the criteria that Paul was giving the individual. Now, if you understand this, because when I when I found this scripture, the Lord was saying, listen, if you if this lady can marry choose to marry anyone she wants, then obviously the man can also choose to marry anyone who we choose. And if he can choose to marry whomsoever they will, then obviously you got options and there is no so then there's not the one or just one particular individual that you can get married to. Alright? It just not existed. Now, also, consider this. Remember in the first video where I explained that if you are, you're only, you are only called to be a eunuch, well, not that. You know if you're called to be a, well, a eunuch is only someone, a eunuch for the sake of the gospel, is an individual who chooses to be that. The option is totally up to you, right? But consider this. If a person who has the option to stay unmarried, if God had created that individual for someone, say person A for person B, and if person A chose to remain unmarried, then person B cannot be punished for person A's decision. It cannot be. So, Therefore, it will suggest, strongly suggest, that you have the option to marry anyone in the Lord. Now, remember this. You know, you know, please, don't take what I'm saying out of context. Because, obviously, the devil's children also go to church. So, not because an individual go to church means that you're just going to blindly choose an individual. No. <laughs> right? There are the criteria to, to assess an individual to see whether or not they are husband material or wife material. Right? You got the word for that. But and I'm pretty sure many of you would have heard heard these things many times over. But these things need to be addressed. And I'm dealing with no, does God choose a spouse? Because there are individuals in the body of Christ who has this mindset. Whether they are aware of it or subconsciously it exists and if you don't deal with it if you don't identify it and deal with it then you may very well be spending your life looking for someone that does not exist and many brothers in Christ subconsciously are doing this looking for the one right so that's it for this video. I hope you have learned something new. Please like this video and share with others, right? I want to continue this series and in it I'm going to explain right some things how you can get or how you know to transition from being single to marriage because there are things that hinders you know, the ladies and men 
from getting married and they are not aware of it. And unless you are aware of it, you will not be able to deal with it. And you may miss out on the blessings and the promise of marriage. And you know we don't want that. So, <laughs> please like and share this video. Until the next video.